Mr. Jones, you're not calling from your studio here today. Uh, can you see me and hear me, sir? Yes, sir. I can see you. I've been uh, watching and, and enjoying the uh, broadcast, and, and I'm, I'm in a hotel, uh, but I come back to Texas uh, today, uh, and so I uh, took a few days off uh, here with the family. But as you said, I'm going to be back busy putting out those Mud Club reports uh, just as soon as I get back, and it's uh, great to be here with you. No, well, well I wish – I mean, I wish – I don't know if these are joyful circumstances. It's not because of what you've been through, but it's always at least somewhat of a win as far as a small battle when the truth comes out. Let me ask you this. What was your reaction when you first saw that video? Was it mixed emotions? Because you know and we know that you've been railroaded. Did you feel some kind of elation because there was confirmation or, or, or was it mostly just anger because you're seeing someone blatantly admit it? Well, uh, I actually heard about the, the video from you guys. I don't know if you know that. Uh, they'd been trying to contact me for a week, and of course it was just going into a black hole. I have a great crew, but they don't check the tens of thousands of emails we get a day properly. I <laughs> don't know how they could. And then uh, one of your producers called and said, hey, they're trying to get a hold of you. Uh, and I, I knew who the group was of the folks that exposed Pornhub targeting children and also Planned Parenthood selling uh, you know, eight-and-a-half-month-old uh, aborted uh, baby parts illegally. Yeah. So it's a very, very credible group that, that kind of split off Project Veritas, very similar to your investigative unit. Uh, and so I contacted him and I said, uh, and I went and checked and you know, saw that uh, Oblevis uh, was who he said he was, formerly with the FBI and then a contract manager uh, for the uh, CIA. That, the, that doesn't mean he's a contractor. He would just manage the contracts right. with their contractors. So he was like a technical guy. And I knew everything he was saying. I've been through it, and that's why I've talked about the SH thing, but I don't even like to say the name, because it's a tar baby. They've got this HBO show out that's total fiction, and they, they tried to rope me in to respond to that, you know, to sue me again. Mm -hmm. And so I've just tried to stay away from it. But the process of what happened, I knew right when Trump won, and suddenly they were having some days hundreds of articles a day, nightly news every night. I mean, we're talking tens of thousands of articles over a two-year period <clears throat> that it was a big PR firm and it was a government operation. They were having congressional hearings about how they wanted to take me off the air. They were saying I was a Russian agent. And so I was like, why are they saying I'm this, the SH guy when I barely ever hardly talked about it, just covered the internet, doubting it. I wasn't the guy that first said that. I, I, I probably, they introduced 22 minutes uh, in court of me, I hadn't talked about it before they sued me for, for two years right. because I had already knew it was some kind of weird, you know, propaganda operation. And, and then after they had the two defaults and, and told the juries I was guilty and rigged those cases and had the HBO cameras in there and everything with the judge putting on makeup and all the rest of it, uh, the PR firms came out two years ago when they won the uh, rigged cases and, and said, we've been running this the whole time. Right. Uh, we didn't like Alex Jones, so we went and took what he said blew it all up in 2016, 17. They basically embellished it to the power of 10 and then built that straw man that I was currently sitting in their houses and currently peeing on graves. Never did any of that. No one ever did any of that. And this so man, by the way, child. this man, pretty he, he admitted that. He admitted that there was nothing that you had done that was criminal. That's what's so scary. He says, yeah, but we have other ways to damage him. Let's just bankrupt him. We've talked about this, right? There's There are the courts, which obviously are corrupt very often. And then there's the court of public opinion where there's no accountability. And he was saying, we know, effectively, what I'm seeing is him saying, we know we can influence the courts through abusing the court of public opinion. So it's important now when you talk about HBO, you talk about these networks, for people to understand the FBI, the CIA, this administration – and these networks, along with big tech platforms, they're often one and the same. Did, let me ask you this, too. Did it surprise you uh, at all when he admitted that the FBI was there January 6th? It, because I know that when you were here, you said, look, January 6th, there were a bunch of people who were rabble rousers. It was a small minority of people, but it was enough that it was significant and they need to be charged with threat. You've been very consistent with that. Uh, but there were FBI agents present. He just confirmed it. Did that surprise you? I mean, it's a leading question, but... You know, it, it, it didn't surprise me. And, and when he said 20, that, that was probably just FBI agents. I mean, we know that there were some people that got into the heat of it and the police fired tear gas and then people broke in. But then the police opened the doors and brought everybody in. And now little old ladies are getting six months in jail for just walking you know, through the velvet ropes. Right. But it, but it didn't surprise me. But it did surprise me that he would sit there and just openly talk to a camera and openly brag about all these activities that he's obviously inside the FBI and the CIA, 
and they're disgusting. So I know he's telling the truth because I experienced it. And without getting into all the technicals, but it's very historic and very important. Yeah. The law firm out of uh, Connecticut that that quarterbacked all this is a high-level Democrat Party law firm. Senator Blumenthal is heavily in, in, involved in it and his family. I'm going to leave it at that, but it's on record. The stolen valor guy that never went to Vietnam but said he was a Marine Corps combat veteran. And it was never, he, he was actually uh, like a gopher at the Capitol for the Marines. <coughs> Part of his quasi draft dodging. The lead lawyer there is a former federal prosecutor whose specialty is putting Republicans in jail, including the governor of Connecticut, literally for supposedly taking like $4,000 know, bribe or something with, with, with no evidence. And so I was also sued by an FBI agent in that Sandy Hook case, never said his name, never showed a picture of him, didn't know who he was, so he sued me. The guy never got harassed. He'd been on the stand. He got one phone call at his office after it happened to see if it was really FBI because he didn't have his you know, FBI uh, name on. He, his rifle was pointing up, you know, not down on his back. People thought this guy's not real, so that they called. I didn't know who he was, and he got $94 million dollars. Under the law in Connecticut, you can't sue somebody for defamation if you didn't say their name. Right. Only said the name of one of the Sandy Hook people ever, and I admitted to that. And, I, and so, so that was the reality. And so the FBI was in there the whole time. Uh, we know uh, because they bragged about it. Also, the Texas case yeah. uh, that they were giving all the discovery to the FBI, hoping to put me in prison. Uh, then, when I declared bankruptcy, the Justice Department is under the law. It's very rare can come into a case and oversee it. And, and so they actually came into the case, and in my depositions, they would have two federal agents right, literally staring at me while lawyers interrogated me, and they were in the news, oh, he's hiding hundreds of millions, he's going to prison. And then, of course, none of that was true. I mean, no. I'm not a big, I mean, I mean, folks, if anything, I'm not organized you know, at all when it comes to money. And, <laughs> well, stuff. and, I, and, I, and I go to a CPA, they do my taxes. And right. Out of this whole, then they sent the IRS in two years ago to audit me. Uh, well, it was actually yeah, two and a half years ago. It was a year-long audit. They tore the office apart. They were there dozens of times. And they said, "We this is very rare, but uh, you are owed $4.2 million. And oh, I have a copy of the cashier's check, and then I had to give that to the bankruptcy court that, that went into a black hole of lawyers. Well, let me, let me ask you this I because for- it gets sorry, it gets a little like you said, it gets a little complicated for people to understand. There's so many moving parts. Um, I do want to get to you know Elon Musk and the space. Uh, you requesting a space there. Uh, by the way, people get a free month of Mug Club right now if they use the promo code Alex. Um, I know you're going to be back uh, here uh, in the continental United States. I don't know where you are, but I, I, I can guess. Let me ask you this though: You do have a lawsuit planned yourself. Um, yes. Can, can you explain that to people so they understand what it is that you're? Yes, and, and, and Stephen, I apologize for going on and on, but but I can, just just let me just finish that last. Go ahead, I'll get into that. My point is, Justice Department, IRS, uh, law firms, uh, rig courts, who are not allowed to defend yourself. This is the cocktail they've used against Trump. It's the cocktail that they're now using against everybody. And, and absolutely, the only reason I want to sue them is to get my name back. I don't even want money, but I want to be able to call Oblevis in. I, I, I want to be able to call their other lawyers in. I want to be able to call in the PR firms because the mistake they made was run their mouth. I mean, the lawyers in Connecticut and Texas, and by the way, the Texas group's the same one suing Elon Musk, by the way, mm-hmm. they got at the courthouse steps when they won their cases. The judge had already found me guilty and then told the jury to find me guilty for a bunch of money. They said, our mission is to silence him. We don't want money. And that's now happening in the bankruptcy court where the judge is like, wait, the law says you can get money, but the law doesn't say you get to silence people. And so basically there's now findings about to be made public that they're dealing in bad faith. So that's some inside baseball. But but yes, I, I, I've talked to several different civil rights law firms, and I've, I've had four conversations with four law firms uh, since this just broke uh, uh, I was talking to him before it broke. So in the last week, yeah. uh, they just broke a day and a half ago. It seems like a million years ago now. And so it's a big deal. You, you know, it's all God. Yeah. You are opening up the mouths of these evil people to then expose themselves. The Bible says the pit they dig for you is the pit they will fall into. And so absolutely, I, I don't like taking on the FBI and the CIA. But if somebody's on top of you, breaking your nose and punching your eyeballs out and, and gang raping you and running over you and backing over you, all you can do is fight back. That's why when I saw the targeting of you a few years ago, I called you. We're already friends then. And I said, listen, don't let it get to you. This is you're successful. You're one of the top talk show hosts. You're a populist. People love you. 
do not, and I know you're smart, but you haven't been through a lot of this yet. You've been through some stuff. I said, you, I know the cut of this jib. I know the yeah. signature. This is 100% the Justice Department, the CIA. They create the narrative. They look at things. They go, we'll take this and we'll take that. And we'll make Alex Jones a guy that bullies kids and pees on graves. Exactly. And then we'll make Stephen Crowder this guy that, you know, literally uh, breaks women's necks and human sacrifices them. And, and it's just all made up. And then they just hype it and hype now it and then. To, 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 to take what you're known for, being smart and being funny and, you know, having a talented crew and, and, and reaching tens of millions of people. And, and now you're someone that, you know, what murders you? children on the side of the highway. And, and, and so just you understand, this is what comes with the territory. The good news is it's backfiring now. And so when I talked to Elon for two and a half hours a few months ago, and I've since, you know, obviously talked to him a few other times, I'll leave it at that. He he really gets it now and yeah. understands that it was all a psyop. And, and, and so yes, I, I, there's a good chance I'll be doing a spaces uh, either Friday or Saturday. Oh, good. Uh, with him. I'd love for you to be involved, but that's that's hopefully in the works. You never know. Yeah. I was supposed to be on one with him, and we were talking to him uh, well, with Zero Hedge a few months ago, but he had basically a, a migraine headache. And I believe he was the guy who works 20 hours a day. Uh, and so th yeah, that's going on. And, and hopefully, I'm just throwing this out there. Hopefully, Elon Musk uh, will bankroll a uh, lawsuit against the deep state because the same – because he's already bankrolled some other ones you know, for, for all the censorship and things. Right. Because the same people coming after him, uh, the very same law firms are the ones suing him. Right. Well, a couple of things I wanted to touch on here. F first off, if you could just give me a short answer on this because then I do want to get to Elon Musk and some of the conservatives who haven't really stood yeah. in the line of fire like they should. Uh, I know you're talking about these lawsuits. I know you can't give you know too much information. But since you were discussing this with law firms beforehand, this new footage that's been revealed, uh, how did your lawyers respond? Did they say this definitely helps? Is it significant to them? Absolutely, because the fact that he's worked with DHS, FBI, and um, manages the technicals of ops. So, so he, right. he's the guy that's kind of like managing you know, the, the, the technical systems. Uh, well, he's an FBI agent. He's a CIA officer. He's got credibility, right? They're all a right. bunch of heroes and good guys. They don't lie. And so that's their narrative. Of course, it's not true, but but he's telling the truth here. Right. And so <laughs> definitely it, it, it's a major civil rights uh, issue, uh, cut and dry. You already have congressional hearings going on with weaponization. Yep. Marjorie Taylor Greene is now calling for uh, hearings on this, and uh, it, it's even going to be involved in, in the FISA uh, re-upping hearings. Uh, already, she's already announced that. Others have announced it. And so... This is really a breakthrough moment, him running his big fat mouth. Good. And so bare minimum, he's probably going to end up being called before Congress. What you so saw, yes, this is a big deal. You saw he just removed, we just found out this morning, he removed his, uh, or his LinkedIn was removed and his Facebook. So that means that he's running and tucking tail. I wanted to get to, I know that Elon Musk called this disturbing. He, he put that out on X and you asked him to do a space. Let me kind of tell you something, Alex, that really bothers me. Um, and I know you've had to deal with this. I know that uh, sound investigations, I, I know they were working on this. And I know that, you know, these kinds of things that, you know, they circulate before they're made public. And there are a lot of people and outlets who could have run with this, who could have supported it and opted uh, not to. And I tell you this, this has happened to me. People have seen it publicly, but for every time they see it publicly, they don't see it privately. You know, for example, when I've been on uh, Pierce Morgan's show, every time he tries to get me to go on and denounce Alex Jones. And I said, no, I'm not going to. You're not going to get me to say that I agree with everything that he says, but you're not going to get me to denounce him or condemn him, it, well, why? I said, cause, because he's my friend, because he's my friend. He's a good man. He's, he's not, no one's perfect, and at least you, you are very transparent about it. But they always try and do that. And here's the thing. I've also had that in depositions. I've had that behind the scenes where the line of question, where you could not be less relevant. They go, and are you friends with Alex Jones? And every time I've had, I've just answered, yes. Yes, I am. And to, to, to be willing to take the risks that you do, and that a lot of people on Mug Club and people in independent media like uh, Mr. Figueredo, who's going to be on, that to me should be the rule, not the exception. So to see other conservatives out there go, well, yeah, this is wrong and it's railroading, but, you know, we just don't want to touch it because it's Alex Jones and he's his own thing. You've been experiencing that for a long time. I would imagine that's why places like Rumble and Elon Musk are significant because you and I both know there are people who put on the team jersey publicly and uh, they don't take on the fights that are, that are actually difficult and require a little bit of fortitude. Well, that's right. And this is a communist or totalitarian tactic where they'll pick one person to pick on at first, and then they'll say, oh, do you support this guy? Get everybody to turn against him or at least not support him. Then they move on to the next person. So that's wolves trying to cut you know, a sheep out of the herd or out of the flock so they can eat it. It's an absolute divide and conquer tactic, and it's pure crap. And I have friends 
when, when they do things I think are wrong, I'll say, yeah, I think they're off base. But bigger than that, people that I'm not friends with, when I see a synthetic attack, when I see the media, the corporate press all piling on, I, I mean, I know what it is. That's their only power now because they have almost no viewers. But they can still scare politicians, scare media, that you're going to be targeted if you talk to this person. Well, the reason they don't want people talking to Stephen Crowder or Alex Jones or ooh, Tucker Carlson is because we're popular and we're telling the truth and the organic population likes us and we have the big audiences. So the media is still, the corporate media, the dinosaur media still wants to be the gatekeepers. Right. And so all they're doing is gatekeeping and, and that's their last power. They have almost no viewers. It's a complete joke. And I found that the hit pieces only create more more support. And I'm not going to go into a long story, but just briefly, I, I'm here in Hawaii. It's already in the news. I'm here. Oh, okay. I was today. trying to keep it under wraps, but you just doxed yourself. No, no, go ahead. A, <laughs> but even TMZ said, oh, yeah, well, you know, we snapped a shot of him. Get nice tea, by the way, at the bar. I was done being good. And uh, people were coming over, shaking his hand, saying, good job. I, and I'm not bragging. It's not about me. It's that, it's that free was popular. If I was... I was here in Hawaii. I like to come here every few years. I was here in Hawaii like five years ago, and I, I shook a lot of hands, but I got yelled at four or five times. I had a guy come over and step on my fingers when my hand was out of the hot tub and say, you know, want some punk? I had to call security. I have literally shook, which I don't mind doing, but I can barely even go to the grocery store or walk down the street or go to the beach. Sure. The police, the, the people at the hotels, almost everybody. I mean, I was at a grocery store yesterday and had like 25 people lined up when I'm in the line shaking my hand. Black, white, Asian, old, young, Hispanic, wow. all listeners. So yeah. so whatever the globalists have done, they've really, 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 really screwed up. Because these people aren't just like, hey, I like your show. They're like, hey, when are you coming back? You know, I've seen uh, you know, Owens do the show. He's great, but where are you? You know, you know yep. I mean, oh, you're here in Hawaii. Yep. And, and I've had a lot of people say, hey, man, we love Stephen Crowder. Literally, I mean, every day somebody at the gas station. I love Stephen Crowder. I love you on the show. We are the media. And, and but, 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 but if people aren't public figures like we are, they don't get that feedback, which is you know, cool to have anonymity. I'm like, oh, I'm famous. What I'm saying is they don't get to see how popular freedom is. So that's why the corporate media is after us, because they're a joke. They're discredited. They lied about WMDs on purpose. They they killed 500,000 Iraqi kids and said it was a good price to pay Madeline Albright. They're the ones letting fentanyl come in. They're the ones dissolving the border. It's Biden that let in 90-plus thousand little kids, Senate report that have come up missing, many of them in sex slavery and in factory slavery. We're not running factories with 12-year-olds. We're not sex slavery with 8-year-old girls being gang raped. I mean, we've done nothing. And so, they go, oh, look, Stephen might have a crooked toenail. You know, we heard that. Or, you know, Alex Jones. It's, it's, it's a fraud and people get it. So the system is so discredited now that that, that their attacks on us are nothing but an endorsement. Well, yeah. That's why they're so, yeah. Well, here's the one, well, well, two things. I do have a crooked toenail. You didn't need to reveal that publicly. Uh, I'm sorry that you had to pay $25 for milk there in Hawaii. The inflation is yeah. unreal. I'm, I'm like, what? It's a $9 loaf? This better be magic bread. And I get asked all the time, one of the most common questions I get asked is, so is Alex Jones really like that? And I hope you don't mind this. What I do is I, I have one of, because you know, you're, you're a busy man, so you often leave me like voice messages. So I have one where there's no personal information, but it's, He'll leave them for me like at 10 o'clock. And I was like, hey, Crowder, I'm sorry. I was, I was on the road. And, uh, you know, what happened is, I, I don't know, this happened. I was at a golf course and I, I, I was under par. But, uh, you know, and then the globalist. And I go, this is him. I go, this is him. He's the same guy all the time. And I say, like him or hate him, that is Alex Jones. But I will say this. The left is not affect. Their attacks don't work. The only effect that they have anymore, the only power they have, are quizlings on the right. In other words, if there's an attack piece in the New York Times or in the Washington Post, People inherently know, or NPR people know. The problem is when there's silence from conservatives or when conservatives go along with it because they say, not me, no true Scotsman. Speaking of globalists, though, I do want to, just so people understand the significance of the threat, you use the term globalist, um, it really is a global problem. Here is actually uh, Mr. Trudeau, Prime Minister, I don't want to say Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau in uh, Canadian Parliament talking about you to the government. Yeah. Sorry, right clip. Here's the other clip. Speaking of misinformation and disinformation, any responsible leader uh, that receives an endorsement and support from proven conspiracy theorist and liar Alex Jones would have immediately denounced that. But that's not what the leader of the opposition did. He did absolutely nothing because those kinds of endorsements fit within his political strategy.
That's right away what they try and do. Like you said, divide and conquer. By the way, his dad is Fidel Castro, just to make it clear. In case you guys didn't know, or Liam Neeson, it could be either of those. I just want you to. I can't prove it, but I'll stand by it. Um, Alex Jones, uh, Nick DiPaolo is here, and he did have a question for you if you, you can. Uh, First of all, thank you, Alex, for taking the slings and arrows and being the stand-up guy that you are. And this is only going to make you stronger the same way all the indictments yeah. with Trump and stuff. My question is, when Trump gets elected, uh, how are they going to? Um, how long is it going to take to uproot this cancerous deep state? I mean, it's a good question. Uh, you know, I mean, how long does it take to? He wants to clean house. I don't know. Do we th- think is he'll that do logistically it? Logistically possible. Yeah. Yeah. And will he do it? I, I, Trump is really a different man now. He's very hardcore. He's super informed. Before he was naive. He admits that to people like Roger Stone who talk to him every day. Uh, Trump really gets it now. Uh, before he thought, "I'm the new CEO. I'll bring in the power structure. They'll take my orders." We'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make America great again. And now he understands that there really is a criminal deep state out to not just get him, but literally destroy America and dominate and control it and parlay our power into global domination. And so if he is able to get in and get past all of the manipulation, which I think obviously a landslide's coming, and they're going to have real trouble blocking it, they're trying to keep him off balance with all these criminal cases and all these big fiascos uh, with the Supreme Court deciding if that continues on. And so we're in for very, very tough times. Yeah. Very, very serious times. Uh, you have to admire Trump for being the man in the arena. And uh, I, I, I stand with him, even though I don't agree with some of the things he does. Overall, he's trying to be the president. He was the president. And he's trying to represent the people as, as, as best as he sees fit. And so the, the attacks on Trump are attacks on the American people and our right to you know, govern our nation. We take Trudeau. For those that don't know, it's a parliamentary system. So we got like 27 percent of the vote. Right. But he's still in power by right. sharing power with the other uh, members of parliament. This is the guy who was asked, what's your favorite you know, form of government? He said, communist China's basic dictatorship. You can get stuff done. He's a guy that had a real SS officer, a real war criminal from Ukraine, a standing ovation. Yep. And so Pierre Polyvier, I'm, I'm like, hey, you know, this guy, you know, really is taking on the globalist. I'm, wow, you know, Canada deserves somebody better than Trudeau. And they go, oh, look, you just got endorsed by Alex Jones. You're Alex Jones. And and, and Polyvier was smart enough to, you know, not go along with their thing. You know, you're right. I, I shouldn't be endorsed by him. And then they say, oh, see, but that's who you are. Right. You know, th- that's a trap. You can just say you're, you know, you, you don't associate with somebody that likes you. And so it just Trudeau's a complete joke. He's trying to pass laws, you know, to put people in jail for their speech. Well, well they already do that. But for long prison sentences, he, he's propped up the media with a, over a billion dollars up there. It's state run. Yeah, it's so, CBC. Yeah, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. And Alex, I hate to, but we do have this uh, Brazilian journalist who's also experiencing, you know, very similar kind of uh, timeline to to what you are. And uh, for people watching, uh, you can go to uh, mu- uh, lotofcutter.com slash mugclub or rumble dot mu- rumble.com slash mugclub or rumble dot mugclub dot. What is the web? <laughs> I just, there's so many, just go to Lotto's Cutter and if they enter in the promo code, Alex, they'll get a month free. But where is the best place for people uh, to find you and support you, uh, Alex? Alex. Uh, just uh, band.video or real Alex Jones uh, on, on X. And, and you can't share band.video still on X. It's right. Cork in the system. When they, uh, so just go to madmaxworld.tv. And of course, the evil tomorrow's news today, infowars.com. Love you guys. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Alex. We really appreciate it, brother. This has been Alex Jones, everybody. Watch Ladder with Crowder live Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.